Yo, what is going on, Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict, and today we are resuming our 12 team PPR Super Flex mock draft series. We are now doing it from the third overall draft selection. We are doing it on the Draft Wizard feature on fantasypros.com. I'm not sponsored, but I always do my Super Flex mock drafts on this platform. I'll leave a link in the description below if you'd like to check them out. The reason I'm not using Sleeper.app for my Superflex mock drafts is because the Draft Wizard ADP for Superflex mock drafts is much better, in my opinion, than Sleeper's ADP. So if you would like to see the roster positions in this draft, they are right here. One quarterback, two running backs, two receivers, one tight end, one regular flex with a running back, wide receiver, and tight end one super flex with a running back, wide receiver, tight end, or quarterback, and then a defense and a kicker, as well as six bench positions. With that being said, let's get right into the mock draft. So to start, Mahomes goes ahead of Christian McCaffrey, and then it's our pick, and taking Mahomes at the third overall pick is very understandable. Lamar Jackson, on the other hand, I don't think it is the best move Now, don't get me wrong. I love Lamar Jackson. He was my biggest sleeper at the quarterback position last season. I loved him. I always had him inside my top 10 rankings for pretty much the entire offseason. And even though I think he's going to be good, we've only seen one season of him producing at this level. I feel much safer with Mahomes as my quarterback. And in super flex, quarterbacks are not as important as they are in two quarterback leagues. Because in a two quarterback league, a true two quarterback league, you always have to start two quarterbacks in a super flex for a few weeks. If your quarterback is out with an injury, it's not the end of the world. You can put in a running back, wide receiver, or tight end. So I am going to go with Saquon Barkley here. He is a phenomenal player. There is no reason why I would take any running back ahead of him. He's great. He's going to catch passes. He can run. He can do anything you want. Yes, you can take Lamar and There's certainly a very good case for taking Lamar right there, but I feel a little more safe with Saquon Barkley instead of Lamar. Then after we took Saquon, we saw Lamar go, no surprise there, as well as Michael Thomas, Devontae Adams, Zeke, Dak Prescott, Kamara, Derrick Henry, Russell Wilson, Dalvin Cook, DeAndre Hopkins, Joe Mixon, Nick Chubb, Deshaun Watson, Kyler Murray, Kenyon Drake, Tyreek Hill, Julio Jones, and Austin Eckler. So it is once again our pick, and let's check quarterback. So we have Josh Allen, Matt Ryan, Wentz, Breeze, Brady, Stafford, Rodgers, all those guys I'm completely fine with. Now, if I wanted two quarterbacks with my next two picks, obviously I would take a quarterback here, but I only need one of these guys because for my second quarterback, it doesn't need to be one of these top guys, and it's a very common misconception that people have about super flex leagues. Now, of course quarterbacks are very important, but you don't need to be spending a early third round pick on a quarterback that you're not even super confident in. And in someone who you can easily get someone in the later rounds that could be just as good as him. So I'm looking at other players such as Miles Sanders at running back and at wide receiver, Chris Godwin. You could go either way here. You really could, but I prefer Miles Sanders over Chris Godwin. He has the receiving upside, and he should get some carries as well. Absolutely love him here. I think he's going to do great. So then after we take him, we see Aaron Jones, Chris Godwin, Adam Thielen, and Travis Kelsey. So it once again is our draft pick. And you can go three different ways here, really. Well, actually two ways, but maybe maybe three. So you can go with quarterback for sure. You know, I would take either Matt Ryan or Josh Allen here. You could definitely go with the running back like Josh Jacobs. And you could probably not go with the receiver, but you could go with Kittle. However, an early third round pick is not worth investing in Kittle, in my opinion. It is between Josh Jacobs and a quarterback. What I'm going to do is test something out. What happens when you don't take a quarterback in the first three rounds of a super flex mock draft? Now, normally I might even take Josh Jacobs, but normally Josh Jacobs is not going to fall the slate. So 
normally I would take a quarterback, but we're going to see what happens when you kind of fade the quarterback position here. So we're just going to learn here. Mock drafts are about learning. We're going to see what happens when we are kind of fitting the quarterback position. Now, we're not going to wait until, you know, the sixth round to draft a quarterback, okay? We're probably going to take a quarterback with our next pick, but we're just going to see what happens when we don't take a quarterback as early as most people would take a quarterback. Then, since we took Josh Jacobs, we saw Robert Woods go, followed by Kittle, Kenny Galladay, Mike Evans, CEH, Leonard Fournette, Allen Robinson, Josh Allen, Drew Brees, Matt Ryan, Zach Ertz, Juju, Tom Brady, DJ Moore, Mark Andrews, Carson Wentz, OBJ, and Le'Veon Bell. So looking at the top running backs available, I definitely have Chris Carson as the best available, but we're probably not going to take him. At wide receiver, Cooper Cup and Ridley are my top two guys for sure. Now at tight end, Darren Waller's the top guy, so we're not going to take him. And then at quarterback, we have Stafford, Rodgers, and Big Ben are the top guys, but I would prefer Rodgers or Stafford. Now, I'm hoping that I could get both of them, but I'm just not sure that would happen. So I think what we're going to do is we are going to take Stafford here and then take Rodgers if he's available with our next pick, but if not, we will take a running back or receiver. So you could take Rodgers if you want, but Stafford is just on an offense that we know they're going to pass. You know, the Packers are running more and more. Lions are never going to be a run-heavy team in the next few years. They're going to be passing the ball. So we'll take Matt Stafford. Let's hope that Aaron Rodgers is there, but I'm not sure that he'll be there. So then we see Amari Cooper go, James Conner, T.Y. Hilton, and Cortland Sutton. So luckily for us, Aaron Rodgers is available. So... We're going to see what happens when, you know, you kind of fade the quarterback position to start, but then are very, very early to get your second quarterback. This isn't something that I usually do. Normally, I take a quarterback in the second or third round and then get my next quarterback in about the fifth round. But here, you know, we took a quarterback in the late fourth round, but then we're taking our next quarterback right after that in the fifth round and getting one of the best quarterback twos in Aaron Rodgers. We'll see how this team turns out, especially considering that we have not taken a single wide receiver yet. So it's our pick again. Let's do a quick recap of what happened recently ever since our Aaron Rodgers pick. So since that pick, we saw Ryan Tannehill go, followed by Todd Gurley, Chris Carson, Cooper Cup, Melvin Gordon, Tyler Lockett, Keenan Allen, Stephon Diggs, A.J. Brown, Ridley, Jonathan Taylor, Daniel Jones, Tyler Boyd, DJ Shark, Metcalf, David Johnson, Big Ben, and Tyler Higby. Very, very early for Tyler Higby there. I would never advise you to do that. So looking at our roster, we have three really, really good running backs, two pretty good quarterbacks, but we don't have a tight end or a receiver. So looking at tight end, the top guy available would definitely be Waller. And I am a little surprised that he fell to me here. You know, he normally goes in the middle of the sixth round in these super flex mock drafts. So we could definitely take him there. Then at wide receiver, McLaurin is available and he is my absolute favorite. So yes, Darren Waller is a great player, but there's like no chance that McLaurin is available with my next pick and Waller could be available. And either way, McLaurin as a wide receiver is more important than a tight end. So we're going to take McLaurin here. I love him. He's a great player. He's in for a huge season. We saw him be great last season. Then we see two quarterbacks go, Cam Newton and Joe Burrow, with Cam Akers and Devontae Parker going in between them. So then since our last pick, we saw Cam Newton go, followed by Cam Akers, Devontae Parker, and Joe Burrow. So Darren Waller fell to us, and I'm really happy to have him. I'm liking how this team is turning out. Waller is a great tight end. He has some risk. I won't deny that, but he has a ton of upside. If you told me that he'd be a top three tight end, I wouldn't doubt you. Like if a genie just walked up to me and said, yo, Darren Waller is going to be a top three tight end. It wouldn't be something that was so surprising to me. I mean, do I have him ranked as a top three tight end? No, but if I was told that that would happen, 
I wouldn't really question it. I'd say, yeah, that, that could definitely happen. But since our Darren Waller pick, we saw Jarvis Landry go, followed by Kirk Cousins, Jared Goff, Baker Mayfield, Hollywood Brown, Michael Gallup, Jimmy G, Brandon Cooks, Devin Singletary, A.J. Green, Edelman, Marvin Jones, Will Fuller, C.D. Lamb, Drew Locke, Deontay Johnson, Mark Ingram, and Kareem Hunt. And now, once again, it is our pick. So at quarterback, we have Crowder and Slitton. And Debo Samuel, who fell quite a bit. Samuel has fallen in drafts so much, and it has become to the point where I feel like it's been excessive. I don't think he should be falling to the 10th, 11th round. That's just unnecessary. So I like all three of those guys. Then at running back, David Montgomery fell all the way here. Now, I don't know how that is possible. Him being ranked as the RB24 is definitely a little lower than some other sites, but the RB24 should have went already. You know, this is very, very strange. I don't know how he's fallen so far. Now, I know on other platforms he has fallen, but I don't know how he's fallen this late, but we'll take advantage of that. I'm going to take David Montgomery. Now, I would not advise you guys to expect him to fall this late, but you know, things happen, and his ADP, they're saying, is the 70th overall player. So, you know, it's nothing out of the ordinary. You know, that's an end of the sixth round pick, which is pretty normal in super flex leagues. So we're going to take advantage of him falling. I think David Montgomery has a lot of upside. He was pretty good last season. The Bears just misused him completely. So we'll hope that he can be a good player for us. Then we see Debo Samuel go, followed by Sterling Shepard, Raheem Mostert, and DeAndre Swift. So at running back, we have Darius Geis, James White, Ronald Jones, Matt Breida. All these guys I really like, but we need a wide receiver. And we have Jamison Crowder and Darius Slayton, but Slayton is my top guy. Yes, there is more competition in New York. Well, I shouldn't say New York because both of them are on New York. There's more competition on the Giants than the Jets, but... Darius Slayton is a better player, and if he is the wide receiver one on this team, he has a ton of potential, and there is no doubt about it in my mind. But Jamison Crowder is a much safer player, so there's always that argument. But I'm going to go with the upside with Darius Slayton here. If you want to go with Crowder, I couldn't really fault you for that, but I think Slayton is the play here. So since our last pick, we saw Jamison Crowder go, followed by James White, Justin Jefferson, Damian Williams, Dobbins, Jerry Judy, Christian Kirk, Darius Geis, John Brown, Sony Michelle, Emmanuel Sanders, Tariq Cohen, Ronald Jones, Anthony Miller, Philip Rivers, Evan Ingram, Matt Breda, and Golden Tate. So looking at the wide receivers available, Nikhil Harry and Rieger are my top guys at tight end because I do like taking backup tight ends. Hunter Henry's available, who's fallen quite a bit, but I just don't really like him this season. He's a little injury prone and this new offense kind of concerns me for Hunter Henry. Then at running back, we have Tevin Coleman, who is the top guy for me, definitely. And Duke Johnson's good too, but Tevin Coleman's a top guy because if Raheem Mostert gets traded, Tevin Coleman is an RB2, no doubt about it. So let's look at our roster really quick. We see that we have four running backs and only two receivers. So just because of that, I'm going to have to go with the receiver here because I don't want to miss out on one of them. Now, I think that you can go either way, but I think Rieger is the safer option, but he's safer in terms of getting eight points a game. I feel like the Keel Harry has a better chance of, you know, being a high end wide receiver three, low end wide receiver two. So we're going to go with Harry here because if Cam Newton starts the season, I think Harry could be a huge, huge machine this season. Then we see Pittsburgh defense followed by Rieger, Tevin Coleman, and Tua. Unfortunately, I didn't get Tevin Coleman, but no worries there because there still are a few other guys who I like. Now we could take another quarterback. Gardner Minshew is available, but I also like Darnold. I also like Carr, so I don't really see the point in taking one of them right now. So we're kind of in a pickle here because, you know, there's not anyone who I absolutely love, but there's just a lot of guys who are okay. 
but I think we're going to go with a backup tight end here and go with Hunter Henry because he is the value here. I haven't gotten a ton of Hunter Henry this season. You know, I haven't really taken him in that many mock drafts, if any, actually, on YouTube. I've taken him in some mock drafts, not on YouTube, I believe, but on YouTube. I don't know if I've ever taken him, but, you know, this is too much value to pass up on, so we're going to take Hunter Henry here. Hopefully, we see some value at running back or wide receiver with our next pick. So it's our pick again, and to do a quick recap, we saw Jordan Howard, San Francisco defense, Keyshawn Vaughn, McCole Hardman, Latavius Murray, Deshaun Jackson, Preston Williams, Philip Lindsay, Mike Williams, Alshon Jeffrey, Duke Johnson, Carrion Johnson, Jack Doyle, Hayden Hurst, Marlon Mack, Alexander Madison, Gardner Minshew, and Zach Moss. So we don't need a tight end at all. At wide receiver, Henry Ruggs is not a bad option at all. Neither is Pittman or Ayuk, but I think Ruggs is definitely a good value here. Then at running back, no one who I really like there, so I don't think we'll take anyone. At quarterback, there's still plenty of options, so we don't need to worry about anyone there. I think Henry Ruggs is the play here. You know, I have been pretty low on him in comparison to other people's rankings of him, but he's fallen a lot for sure. In this draft, he doesn't normally go this late, so I think it's a good move. Then Robbie Anderson, Mike Jacecki, Henderson, and Boston Scott. So let's look at our roster. We have two more bench spots and then defense and kicker. So we got to decide what we want to use here. We have four running backs and four wide receivers. So there is quite a few ways that we could go here. I think we'll take a backup quarterback. And they're getting kind of slim here. So we'll take one now. I think Derek Carr is the play here. I know I have Josh Jacobs and Henry Ruggs. So it is a little risky. So we could go with Darnold. And you know what? Now that I think about it, yeah, we'll go with Darnold. I like Carr more overall, but I already have two pieces of this offense, two key pieces of this offense. Don't need to get a third. It's fine. We'll take Sam Darnold. I think that is completely fine, and he should be pretty good. So we'll hope that he can be a solid third quarterback for us and provide a little bit of value. Then Bridgewater goes, followed by Pollard, Baltimore defense, Carr, Jared Cook, Naheem Hines, Hooper, Brashad Perriman, Gronk, AP, Fitzpatrick, Chase Edmonds, Jamal Williams, Antonio Gibson, Justin Jackson, A.J. Dillon, Curtis Samuel, and Randall Cobb. So for our last bench spot, we have Brandon Ayuk, we have Michael Pittman, no one else really though. Then at running back, if we want to take a running back, we have Chris Thompson, who's not a bad option, and I think he's probably the play here. You know, Chris Thompson is very interesting. I don't think he's going to play a full season because he almost never does. But in those seasons, especially when he's being coached by Jay Gruden, Chris Thompson always does pretty well in the games that he plays. Jay Gruden loves targeting Chris Thompson. So we're going to go with Chris Thompson here because for a few weeks, he will be really, really good and provide a lot of value for us without a doubt. Then Devontae Freeman, TJ Hawkinson, Buffalo defense, and Sammy Watkins. So now it's our time to take a defense and it looks like the Patriots is the best defense here. You know, the Patriots have a good defense. They won't have a very fast-paced offense, so they're just going to be relying on their defense, playing slow games, and not giving up many points, and that is the kind of defense that I want. Now, it is our time to take a kicker, and I see Matt Prater, I see Jake Elliott, but I'm sure that Matt Gay is somewhere down here, right? Oh, maybe not. Did Matt Gay... Oh, yeah, he did get taken. Okay, so... It's between Prater and Elliott. You could go either way here, but I'm going to stack Matt Prater with Matt Stafford because I know it's always good to stack a quarterback with a running back or tight end or wide receiver because studies have shown that it's just a beneficial thing to do. It increases your chance of winning a championship. And I think the same thing probably goes for quarterbacks with kickers. So we took Matt Prater there. Before we end this draft, let's do the most important part of the draft which is doing a recap and giving our team a grade. Different than the Fantasy Pros grade that they gave us, because that, I could not really care less about what they give us. I'm going to give us our own grade, and that's what's going to really matter. So to start out, we have Stafford, Aaron Rodgers, and Sam Darnold. That's a very good trio of quarterbacks. Stafford and Rodgers 
are pretty good in the same division. There's going to be quite a bit of scoring in this division. Love that right there. Then Saquon Barkley and Miles Sanders is tremendous. Absolutely phenomenal. And then we have Josh Jacobs as our flex. That is the best flex I have ever gotten in any mock draft. Josh Jacobs is a solid RB1. Now we have him as our flex. That is tremendous. At our tight end, we have Darren Waller, who's very good as well. Now, our weakness is definitely wide receiver. McLaurin and Slayton is nothing special, especially our wide receiver too, Darius Slayton. But we have Nikhil Harry. We have Henry Ruggs. So it sort of makes up for it. Then we have David Montgomery and Chris Thompson on our bench. Love that right there, especially David Montgomery. If this were a real team, I would probably end up trading Josh Jacobs and Chris Thompson, or maybe even Josh Jacobs and David Montgomery for an elite wide receiver. I would trade them to get someone like Devontae Adams probably, and I think that would be a great move. So this team alone, I would give them an A, so about like a 95 out of 100. But when taking into consideration the possibility of a trade, this team is an A+. You know, I would give this a 98 out of 100. And once we actually trade David Montgomery and Josh Jacobs for an elite wide receiver, this, in my opinion, is a 99 or 100 out of 100 because the team would be so well-rounded. There's no flaws in this team at all. And we have Hunter Henry to back up Darren Waller. So, you know, there's no concerns with that team once we make that trade. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're still watching, let me know in the comments below what you would grade this team. Do you agree with me? Would you give it an A, assuming a trade happens, an A+, plus, or would you give it something else? If you did enjoy the video also, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button because I can't stress this enough. It seriously helps out the channel so much. It helped me get the video out to more people. And if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button because I put out fantasy football content almost every single day. I put out between five to seven videos every single week and I do not want you guys to miss out on that. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Peace.